within the office of the president and uh, I was appointed as a, as a city resident commissioner from Masaka City and he appointed, he had transferred my colleague and friend uh, Fatuma Ndisaba Nabitaka to Mukono as the new resident district commissioner. She's here. So, but because we had this issue of uh, elections going on, we thought they advised us that we could first handle some phase of the elections. Otherwise, our, our transfers, our appointments, they take immediate effect. Therefore, today, the function we are going to conduct is that very one of handing over the office of the RDC to my colleague. Then I proceed to go and become the RCC of Masaka. Uh, hand over report. I wish to welcome you to your new station, uh, Madam Nisabanari Taka Fatuma. I also take this opportunity to thank the District Security Committee and the entire leadership of Mukono District for the support you have given me during my stay in Mukono. I have been here for two years and one month, and I want to state that in my stay, I have enjoyed working with everybody in Mukono. But of course, some may, not, may be annoyed with me, some may be happy with me, and that is the nature of our work. At this moment, I'd like to hand over my current duties and government properties in my possession to you, and also report to you as follows. Uh, security issues. Mukono district is generally peaceful and calm, with the exception of some house breakings in some few urban centers, animal theft in rural areas, areas in Nagarama division, and stealing of vanilla. But Mukono being part of the metropolitan part of Kampara, and an industrial hub for that matter, there is potential for insecurity anytime. The potentiality is as a result of drug abuse in most urban areas, unemployment to the youth in most urban centers, and inciting language, should be inciting language of the opposition politicians. Therefore, there is constant need for intelligence gathering, routine patrols, and at times some snap checks. Mukono District has two divisions, namely Mukono Division of Police and Nagarama Division. It also has a battalion of LDU headquartered at Impoma Satellite. Is the LDU people represented here? I think they haven't come. Then you have PDF battalion uh, headquartered at the Seta and Yango Road. Any questions from me, PDF? It has here. Uh, the battalions, the two battalions have been instrumental in supporting police-led operations, including the ongoing electoral process, which has been re which has registered suc suc successful so far. Therefore, since elections have different dimensions at every at each stage, st and each stage has its own ramifications, I propose that vigilance and patrols should be enhanced. The district also has a high court 
who is the resident judge, the DPP's office, headed by the principal, Sweet Anthony, and the prison services at Kauga, headed by the prison's commander, this prison's commander. The district is comprised of one municipality, two divisions, namely Mukono, uh, Goman Mukono, Central Division, five town councils, that is Katosi, Ntenjel town, town Council, Namataba Town Council, Nachikumanagarama Town Council, and the Kasao Town Council. Eleven sub counties that, that include Kome, Bunge, Mpata, Nama, Natsunga, Champsi, Seta Namganga, Nagoje, Ntunda, and Kasao. Land management. Besides security, there is also another biggest issue to be handled by the office as directed by, the, by His Excellency the President. These land conflicts range from public land, Uganda Land Board, family land, and lease land, lease home. Uh, so uh, Mukono has land of different dimensions. One is land for Uganda Land Board, others public land, others is customary land, so it's a mixture. Uh, they are also of different nature. These lands are different nature. Most of these land of conflicts, and unfortunately, they get many years ago. I can say in the last two years, the larger part of the land conflicts we have handled, most of them are as 20 years, 30 years ago. So they are not as of yesterday. Of course, others, fresh ones come, but there is a lot of backlog. This office and the district security committee recognize that the land conflicts were as a result of population pressure, land speculation, and greed. Mukono has a lot of land speculators. They can come even impose a title on their own land. Recently, they went and sold church land in Namadea, the, and someone started the building. So when I called him, he said, hmm, so and so told to me, how do you build in the front of a church? So the land speculators in Mukono are so many, and also greed. So you need to keep your antennas high. Hence the desire to constantly, to constantly evict and displace the marginalized ones and, 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 and the underprivileged. Therefore, the DS opted the following temporary measures. The district security committee, when we came, we decided to, do, to agree on the following. One, no round boundary opening should take place without authorization of the district security committee. So any land op uh, boundary opening must get authorization from you. Because when there are problems in society, they don't look for the surveyor, they don't look for the staff surveyor, or Manyasini or what, they come to you. So we said no. Let us handle these issues before this they emerge. Two, in the process of addressing land conflicts, we decided that all parties must be present. So if somebody has chosen another, it is not good to, to listen to one side. We have been listening to all the parties. Whenever handling land matter, all the key stakeholders must be involved. The police should be involved, the intelligence, that at the end of the day, all of us are on the same page. In the management of land matter conflicts, all these staff, that is security committee, key stakeholders should be updated. They may not be present, but you should be able to update what has happened in such a system. In regard to land, when I come to office, I found the district land here, 49 acres of land, was being shared by some, some individuals. So, <coughs> Uh, land was being shared by some people and as a result investigations were commenced and they want to report that the inspectorate of government concluded the investigations on the matter and the report was produced and as a result the directives cancel all land titles that were acquired fictitiously on the district land was issued and many other recommendations which have not have not been fulfilled fully. I'm handing over the report to you for actions on other, on other recommendations there in the report. So, 
we appealed to the IGG and the IGG produced a, a comprehensive report which is here and this report is full of uh, of somebody who did what is a compre comprehensive report there are some people here who should be interdicted there are some people here who had acquired the land suspiciously and the land titles they directed the Bugan Land Board to cancel the land title and the Bugan Land Board also wrote back confirming that the land on this hill 49 acres of land belongs to Mukono district so I'm going to hand over this report to you for further action and management I think I'll do it at the same time as others but the report is here for you. All the documents are within. So I want to commend the office of the IGG uh, and the DHO's office. Because by that time they were evicting health workers on their own, in their own houses. So it became a concern to me, but fortunately uh, we investigated it and the matter was concluded. And what is remaining is some of the areas that have not been acted on, uh, to be acted on. There are the above, policies have managed to produce some temporary relief to the underprivileged. At least in my tenure as an RDC, uh, we have made sure with my deputy to make sure that nobody should be evicted from his chivanja because the landlord has not allowed it. NB, the district has a lot of land speculators who are always on the lookout to grab any land available. Uh, politics. As we are in, the, in this election process, politics in Mukono is very vibrant and in the ongoing electoral process, the NRM political party has not performed well in most level from presidential. Uh, Democratic Party and NUP seem to be taking center stage with some radical, radical elements. The NUP wave, the NUP wave seem to be cutting across most, mostly uh, the, the region of Uganda. Therefore, it is important that we start addressing the questions of what could have happened and what is behind or what is the driving motive behind this wave, despite some modest service delivery by government within the district and the entire country. When you look at, uh, for instance, government has introduced to use life and Work. Now there's a new initiative, there is a SEDGE, a Senior Citizens Grant. Uh, there are many. Uh, almost every sub country has a health center free. But we need to know now what could be annoying the population by not voting government. So it's one of the issues that we must seriously uh, look at. Therefore, I recommend that full-scale political mobilization and intelligence gatherings should start immediately such that we address the likely causes of the problem. Government programs. Mukono district being one of the pioneer districts in Uganda, it has been having a fair share of the national care. In the last financial year, Mukono dispensary was upgraded to the referral hospital with an accompanying budget and the and three other hospitals have been recommended for upgrading health center from health center three to health center four. Uh, that is Kome from the health center three. We have upgraded health center four. Uh, there is also Goma, Najifuma, Katogo. All of them, the minister and the PS agreed that they should be upgraded health center four. At our referral hospital, there is even a, a lab, a hub, should be a hub, which is capable of collecting samples for COVID-19. Therefore, we have been able to pick samples from suspected patients for screening, and it has helped us contain the spread of the epidemic. Generally, given the increasing population pressure or exclusion due to increasing industrialization and other factors, it's important for government to expedite the transition of the hospital. Uh, the hospital was upgraded, but some things have not yet been done. Like um, staffing levels are still the same. Uh, salaries are still being paid by the municipality. 
So they still need to streamline the transition so that work can, can work, can start quickly. Operational creation. Government has been able to provide coffee seedlings, cassava cuttings, mango seedlings, banana suckers, cocoa seedlings, cows, and other many items. The production department, which is the, is the engine, which is the engine of operational education, has been more facilitated with transport, motorcycles, and fuel, and allowances. So, there's no reason now for somebody's cow to die, or somebody's crops to be infected with insects, and the production department is not active. We gave them new motorcycles, they have fuel, and the allowances is provided for. Because once people are not are not aware of it, once people don't have food, it's a hard challenge. So there's no reason now for why production department cannot do its job. Education sector. Education before COVID-19, we, we still had challenges of charging school fees in some government schools of which I'm very sure when the schools open the same habit is like it will be. Some had teachers and parents associations were imposing some charges. So this is a matter that we had not tackled before but I know when they open they are like it go back. There is need there is need to have plans ahead of ahead of counteracting such a business. Currently in implementing the manifesto the government is putting up a secondary, a secondary school, six school in Chimenyede, which is about to be completed. Roads. We have three uh, road units. Actually, they should be graders. Shared by both district and the municipality. Two of them are functional and one is non-functional. But, but because of the nature of the terrain and the rains we have had in this year, most roads are most roads in the roads in road, sub counties are in bad state, but there is still need to examine why and analyze why sub counties are not effectively grazing the graders. Now, I picked information. Some sub counties have money for roads on their accounts, and uh, they claim that the graders have not been given to them. So it's a matter that you need to pick interest is the cow and see what where the problem could be. Municipality roads, most of them need to be tamak in order to decongest the traffic jam on the road. In the last financial year, the district managed to work on the following roads, major roads, Wafu, Kasao, Setanamuganga, connecting to Wero, Nagojentunda, Kasokoso Road, Biafra, Katiente Road, that's Natsunga, Natsunga, Biafra Road, and other. Natural resources. The district is endowed with natural resources, which include wetlands, forests, and natural water bodies. The above mentioned natural resources are being threatened by encroachers and sand miners, sand mining, filling up of the wetlands for construction, deforestation, and illegal fishing. All these human activities are a threat to the survival of the natural resources of the natural resources we have in the district. Therefore, we had, start, we had started a program of environmental conservation with the natural, with NFA and the Ministry of Environment. I'm happy that the range manager is here. I therefore urge you to continue with these programs so that these natural resources should not be depleted and, and of recent, there is fresh residential directive this issue. Even when he was giving his uh, Victor speech, he mentioned on this. Recently we had a calamity, the fish on the lake died. Uh, it was because of the, of the increasing temperature on the, on, the, on the lake. And this is as a result of the degradation of, uh, of the natural resources. Uh, just slow, no, no, economic, economic empowerment. There are various programs of government under this sector to enhance the socio-economic transformation which includes, among others, youth rivalry programs, 
uh, senior citizens of land and and uh, and, for, and, and, and money for the disability, presidential initiative in yoga and others. All these programs are, go are ongoing and require cross monitoring. Like the Myoga, all the money is already on the account, about 3 billion is here. They have not yet disbursed it. But we need to cross check whether all the groups have been involved in this Myoga. So these are money to be helping the poor get better. Justice, law, and other sector generous. We, the office of the RDC, have had a code working relationship between this office and the stakeholders in Jeros through the District Coordination Committee, DCC. That one is chaired by the Chief Magistrate. Uh, the District Intelligence Committee meetings, job meetings, and other forums. What has always emerged in these meetings is that it is very difficult for the underprivileged the poor to get justice. All the meetings, if you, when, you, when you hold a community meeting, they'll tell you, if, if you have a community meeting, you have a police. So, this is an area that is still great. Therefore, it must, it must remain, cost, there is need for constant engagements between this office and other key stakeholders by sharing information, advising each other for purposes of providing justice to everybody. And maybe in this regard, I want to report to you that we are building a high court office. There. They will get, uh, they, they will get money from the government and the office, the, the, the building is under construction for the high court. Uh, critical issues at hand. COVID-19 epidemic, the district has had its share of COVID-19 epidemic and we have so far 500 patients cumulative, those who have been confirmed. Then death, seven. But what is most crucial is that we have many people in the community who are asymptomatic and are in the community infecting each other. The challenge we have, most people, don't show signs. So for them, they can have a capacity to infect others when for them they are working. And the challenge we gave out in Mukono, we gave out government masks, 880,000. But if you move in the town here, you may not get 10 people who are putting on masks. So people have masks in their pockets, in their homes. And there is this tendency, until one has lost a friend, that's when they come start getting scared about COVID. So COVID is still a problem, and uh, there's need to continue constant sensitization. Therefore, the issue of constant reminding the public, reminding the public and enforcing standard political procedures should remain in place. I'm going to hand her over the constitution. I'm going to hand over uh, NRA manifesto, which has been a government policy. It's going to be concluded in May. We are still implementing this one. Then, after swearing, we shall be implementing this one. Then, uh, the local government act. Then, this is the report about the land. And then, the this is the office key. This is the local government act. Those are functions are in the constitution and the local government act. So, Madam Zishaba, let us start with the constitution. This is the main document regarding our responsibilities and roles. And this is the main law within the district the local government act as amended. Now, these are the government policies we are implementing up to May. Now, I, I, I know it's no longer speculation. We shall implement this one after May. <laughs> and lastly, this is the report regarding 
uh, this land of Mukono. Whoever interested about the land of Mukono is here. Now this is the the official stamp of the RDC. And this is the key. And then this is the national flag. So since there is COVID, we are not going to shake hands. <laughs> Thank you so much. This copper is yours. Uh, so what we are going to do, you come and sit here. And me, I sit where you are. Because now, now you are the chairperson of the district security committee. Take over your duties. to thank my yeah. colleague, Afande Wamwine Fred, for the handover. I welcome everyone in today's meeting, the first of this kind for me as the new RDC of Mukono District. I can't forget thanking the DSC and Afande Wamwine, who has been the chairperson for whatever it has done for the district that developments that come from the resolutions that you've been making for the district. And I can't forget to thank my colleague, Richard Wabie Tulume, for the support given to the office of the RDC. I pray to God that you accord me the same support that you've been according to my colleague. The staff of the RDC, I thank you so much. That this so for the support. And at the same time, I can't forget to thank the Mokono community team for giving you support. Because Mokono is a district, one of the historical districts in this country. They are not so good, but they are not bad. I know they've been cooperative and they've given you support in the two years that you've stayed in the district. I thank the media for always communicating the good and the bad that we do as the office of the RDC and whatever we do as the district. I thank you so much and I hope we shall work together. I pray that we report that is we report the news that is not going to make our communities riot. We report whatever is giving a credit to the government. And I have a fear that I've come in the district where people decided to vote in contrary to the government. But I understand that there are some reasons, there are some issues that as government we have to look into to make sure that those people come back on board. So, it's my prayer that don't leave me because you've already handed over the office to me. I'll keep on raising you for more issues because the handover is something that is brief, but we have to sit with our colleague, the deputy Aradis and Adiso, to see what we should do to the district. Because staying in Mukono for two years, it's not something that is too little. So I think you have a very big stone that you have to put on the development of Mukono as a district. The colleagues from the NRM, the admin who has represented the chairperson of NRM, I know there are many issues that you have to look into. I know I'm a public servant. I don't have to go that extra mile. But there are some issues which were put in the NRM manifesto that the people are not seeing down there. What is the problem? I think it is a communication gap. So we have to give it time as the party. My principal is the chairperson of NRM. So we have to give that time to the community to explain what the government is doing for the communities down there. So I think we can give that time and see how we shall organize and make sure that you come back on board, inshallah, in 2025, 2026. Then the chief administrative officer who is heading the technical department, I think for you the government gives you money. 
on its behalf to do all the services in the district. But we take an extra mile, do the CDOs go deep down there to explain what the communities, what the masses should benefit. How are they benefiting from the billions of money that the government is giving to Mukono district? Afande Mamwina has been elaborate enough in his report. Because for me, when I was doing my handover in Ivitebo, I didn't go that extra mile in departments because I know that is your responsibility. For me, I only touched this security and the mobilization part. But he has been elaborate enough and talked about each sector, the road sector, the education sector, the OWC, are we really seeing those activities being implemented down there? What's wrong with our CDOs? Are they doing the work that they are supposed to do? So it's just a humble request, the representative and Mr. Carl, Madam Jessica, let's give time to the communities. Let's show them the relevance of these programs. Because the government is putting a lot of money in different programs. UEP, YLP, DDEC. But is it there? Do the people know that that money comes from government? The billions of money that are given to Mokono district, are we seeing it? What is the impact of all that money? I think there is a gap, a communication gap between the elders in the district and the youths that have just reached the age of voting. Are we relevant to them? So it's just a humble request through you, Mr. Cow or Madam Cow, the representative of our cow, that lets the community department do its role. Let them go down there and educate the youths on what they are supposed to do. It's not a matter of driving the motorcycle that the government has given you, but do you really cause meetings to educate these people? Because as a community worker, you have to educate and make these people know their roles. Do we really reach the Sabu counties? Because I saw there are many Sabu counties, even the islands. Do we really go there? All these people just assign requisitions for facilitation without even reaching the ground. I'm not, I'm, I'm too much of a principled lady, as everyone says. But what amazes me most is doing work as we planned. So it's just a humble request. If you want to see the best side of Fatuma, let's work on plan. Let's communicate. Let's try to be transparent. We shall have to work together. Because I can't work alone. I know we have to work as a team. I'm a team player. I know what I'm supposed to do. I'm too transparent. I don't have a side in my heart. I don't have a room in my heart. Whatever I speak out is for the good of the community. So I would love each one of you to learn me to share with me. Don't say that the lady is too rude, she's too tough. I'm always like that. But I'm a performer. I know I'm a performer. It's not easy to work where you were born. It's not easy to work where I stay. But I know the appointing authority vetted me and he knew that I'll have to deliver in Mukono. So I will deliver with your support. Let's coordinate. Let's work as a team. I know Dr. Conde as a performer. We have to work together, Doctor, to change the lives of the people down there. Because the most complaints that we have as a district is about that hospital. I thank the government because it took the hospital and it upgraded it to a hospital status. But do our people get the services down there? I know you're a performer. We shall work together. We shall do joint monitoring. We shall inspect whoever we are supposed to inspect. People are saying it is not Ibonaba Some, it is Ibonaba Kone. But why? Because a lot of money is being put down there. What do our head teachers do? Of recent, the president said it is free education. But what do our head teachers do down there? So, Madam Cow, I request we do joint monitoring. We sit and we plan for the security and the technical monitoring. We sit as a team and forge a way forward for the development of Mukono district. For God and my country, I thank you so much for honoring me, for welcoming me, for preparing this beautiful handover ceremony. I thank you so much, Mr. Bamwine, for the work that you've done for the district. We shall work together. The DPC, the, is it Osinagalam division? 
DPC, Nagarama Division, you have two DPCs. Hey, and now I'm integrating, I'm integrating from a rural setting to an urban setting. Whenever I go wrong, please advise me because I've spent two years working in Igutebo, which is a rural district. I've been having one DPC now, I'm going to work with two DPCs. So I've been working with only a cow, now I have a cow and a town clerk from Kono Municipality with six town councils. Yeah, we shall manage. For God and my country, I remain Fatuma Ndisawa Nagitaka.